What's going on, everybody? Xavier Porter, Brooklyn Fights, Shoot the Five in the building. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. That Tony Harrison and Jam Jamel Charlo fight, that was a phenomenal, phenomenal fight tonight. I tried to go live. However, I guess my, my phone service needs to be upgraded because <laughs> that shit was fuck it up. I ain't going to front. I was going to sit here and try to provide some fight commentary on the fight. However, the phone kept freezing up. I kept trying to get like a reconnection and it just wasn't working. Well, it don't matter. It is what it is. We all saw the fight. We all saw Jamel Charlo become and reclaim his WBC Super Wattsway 154 title. In a great fight. I mean, the fight was fantastic. Both men were throwing shots back and forth. Um, Charlo knocked him down. I think it was the first round, second round. I could, I could be wrong. Knocked him down early, you know. Dropped him early. And but once he knocked him down, that boy Tony Harrison. That boy Tony Harrison started to dictate, control the whole atmosphere of the ring. Because everything that Charlo was throwing... Tony Harrison was nullifying and blocking with the ease. His jab, his one-two was there. It was pretty. It was strong. You could see both men, as the fight was progressing, both men started to kind of like fade a little bit. However, it was Charlo, Jamel Charlo, who continued to throw punches. Regardless if they were landing clean or not, Jamel Charlo was, was, how, how should I say this? Tony Harrison was landing his one-twos, and they were they were occasional one-twos as the fight progressed. They were landing clean. They were landing solid. Can't take nothing away from that. And on top of that, he was going to the body, and he was landing some uppercuts. However, Jamel Charla was doing the same thing. You know what I mean? Now, his shots wasn't landing so clean, but they were landing regardless. It was causing, he was applying pressure. In my opinion, he was the more active fighter. I had to fight even going into round 11 until Charlo knocked him out. Charlo dropped him twice in round 11, and the referee ended up stopping it. You know, Tony Harrison, he was lazy. He was lackadaisical. He started having too much fun in there, and he lost focus. Every shot that Charlo was landed on the gloves and in the arms, you should have been making making him pay. Instead, you was ha ah, smiling to the crowd. You was shaking. You was you know shimmying. You was doing all what you be do you know doing all what you was doing like ha 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 ha. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you. You should have been focused on really trying to lock in and get rid of your opponent. Because your opponent was focused on getting rid of you. Jamel Charlo boxed. And he, and, and he made sure he kept his mentals about him. Again, boxing is 90% mental, 10% physical. He boxed Tony Harrison. While Tony Harrison was boxing... While Tony Harrison was landing some shots in there, clean shots, Tony Harrison thought the fight would be so easy that he could just continue to do what he was doing like he did from the first fight and continue to have some have some success in the second fight, which he was having in the second fight. However, he got lackadaisical. He got knocked down twice by a left hook and then just got obliterated, in a sense, with the third knockdown with the repeated up, left uppercuts. <laughs> And I always tell people, the Charlos have the, has one of the best uppercuts in the game. Jamal, that is, has one of the best uppercuts in the game. And his twin brother, Jamal ain't too shabby with it either. That that boy landed like four uppercuts in a row and dropped Tony Harrison. Bong, 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 bong. And the ref was like, well, goddamn, <laughs> how many of these you going to take? <laughs> Referee Jack Reese was like, hey, man, you going to keep taking these left uppercuts? <laughs> and then he let him up to you know square off and try to defend himself and then you know 
it appeared that Tony Harrison had his wits about him, but you know, he 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 already had taken enough. He already had taken enough. I I I definitely want to see a part three to Charlo and Harrison. I really do. I really want to see a part three to Charlo and Harrison. I think a part three between Charlo and Harrison will probably end the same way, but maybe even quicker. I don't think the fight will pro- would necessarily get to the 11th round like it did today. I think the fight will probably end maybe 8 or 9. You know what I mean? Because Tony Harrison was laying some leather on Jamel Charlo. Let's keep it a buck. We, I cannot deny, I cannot sit here and act like Tony Harrison wasn't laying hands on Jamel Charlo. I cannot sit here and act like Tony Harrison wasn't laying the one-two on Jamel Charlo. And he was doing it from round one to about rounds eight or nine, or I would say to about, and I mean consistently. Like, he was doing it, but I mean consistently to about maybe round seven, round eight. He was laying that one-two on him heavy. The jab, jab, right hand, jab, right hand, jab, right hand. The one-two was there all day, every day. The one-two-three was there all day for Tony Harrison on Jamel Charlo. Only problem is he wasn't coming behind it with the hook to the head. He was coming behind him with the hook to the body, but shit, Jamel Charlo was eating them shots to the body like, okay, boom, great body shot, I eat that, great body shot, I eat that, great body shot, I eat that. Jamel Charlo stayed the game, he stayed the course, he stayed focused, his mental focus was, I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to keep throwing punches, whether they land on the gloves, whether they land on the outside of the gloves, whether they land on the chin to the head. I'm going to land these shots. And eventually, one of these going to get through. He got through in the first round, and then he got through in the 11th round. That left hook caught him right on, caught Tony Harrison right on the chinny chin chin, on the whiskers. Boom, dropped him. Got up, boom, boom, boom. More, more, more shots. Went in for the kill. Left uppercut, left uppercut, left uppercut, left uppercut. Boom, down again. And then the referee was like, okay, fight continue. And it is what it is. Jamel Charlo made sure that he wasn't going to, you know, be able to throw any more punches. And referee Jack Reese said, you know, enough is enough. Shout out. Huge shout out to Jamel Charlo. That's a big win for him. That's a big confidence win for him. That's a big win for him in the division. That's a big That's a big win for him in his career. Because he, he lost a, how you say, a, a fight that couldn't win either way. And he felt like he won the fight in the Barclays last year, but he wasn't given the decision. And he came back, and, and through all the shit talking, let's keep it a buck, through all the shit talking that's been going on from last year to now, to yesterday, to, you know, yesterday's way in to now, that's a huge win for him. And both men shook hands at the end of the fight, salute both men for that. Neither man gonna like each other, but both men shook hands after the fight. And Tony Harrison, there's nothing for you to hang your head on. You 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 just took you just lost, bro. You just lost. You 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 was in the fight, but your mental focus left you somewhere somehow. The same way Tommy Hearns, in my opinion, was defeating Sugar Ray Leonard, but then your mental focus lost. Now, if you watch the Tommy Hearns fight against Sugar Ray Leonard, the first fight, you'll see that Tommy Hearns was dominating Sugar Ray Leonard. But then something happened in the fight where he lost a little bit of focus and he overextended himself and kind of kind of like ran out of condition and energy and stamina. Tony Harrison was trying to pace himself, but if you really, really watch the fight with Tony Harrison and Charlo, the second fight, you can see Tony Harrison starting to extend himself towards the championship rounds. Stretching his jab out there a little bit longer than it needed to be. Stretching the jab out there and, and then trying to stretch the right hand. Not moving his legs. He wasn't moving his legs and his hips. He was really stiff between the hips and the legs. The one, two, three was there, but he was a little really, really stiff in the hips and the leg movement. That's the reason why, hey man, he took the L. Again, shout out to both men. Fantastic fight. I mean, fantastic fight for Charlo, for Harrison. And for the fans to bear witness. With that being said, I w- I'm hoping that they don't let Errol Spence fight again. 
And I'm going to leave it at that because if y'all watched the fight like I did and y'all saw Errol Spence come up on stage and, and talk to whoever he talked to, Brian Kenny, that is, I don't think Errol Spence is ready to enter the ring anytime soon. I think they need to let, let that man rock out with his millions, let that man retire gracefully, let that man just enjoy his life with his family and his kids. Errol Spence did not sound good. He did not look good. And... I, I mean, he said, hey, I don't remember the accident. I wouldn't remember the accident either if I got thrown out of a 100-mile-per-hour Ferrari. <laughs> if I got ejected out of a 100-mile-per-hour Ferrari, I wouldn't remember anything either. What I did like what Errol Spence said was, I'm focused on being around my family and my kids more and this, that, and the third. That's what he need to do, man. Let him take care of that, man. Let him take care of that. Don't put that man in the ring. He told me he cleared the fight again. How? Who? Why? Why would you clear that man to fight again? Why would you clear Errol Spence to fight again, man? Let that man rock out and live his life. He got millions and millions of dollars. Let that man rock out and, you know, chill. Come on, man. It's a problem with people, man. It's a problem with people. Shoot the Five, Brooklyn Fights, Xavier Porter. It is what it is. Congrats to Jamel Charlo on retaining his title. Shout out Tony Harrison for, for a phenomenal fight. Shout out both men for a phenomenal fight. Shout out Eric Spence. Sit down, relax, enjoy your life, bro. You got millions and millions of dollars, bro. You got millions and millions of dollars. Please, somebody advise him. Al Heyman, advise him. Take care of that young brother. Don't let that young man go out there and fight and lose his life in the ring. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. LDBC, 